Mm. Thirsty. Who else is thirsty? Hi guys. We made it. We slash me slash you slash us did it. We're doing a second video. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm crazy. Guys, are you noticing anything? Do you see anything different? Guys, my audio and video aren't as much shit anymore. I got a real camera and a real microphone. Um, the meat of the video, unfortunately, will still have crappy video because I didn't have the camera yet when I made the bodysuit. Um, I'm sorry. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be making a black bodysuit. When bodysuits first came out, I was like, what is this trend? I used to dance, like, why do people wanna have leotard butt? You know, like, that's not a fun look. But then I actually tried one on and saw that they're more of a, you know, booty cut. More of a thong. Anyway, I realized they're actually really cute and kind of sexy. The thing I like about bodysuits is that can you see that? Every shirt I wear is tucked in. Mm -mm. <laughs> so the thing I like about bodysuits is that you don't have to tuck them in. They're automatically tucked in. That's great for audio. I love doing this when no one's home. I can be crazy. I don't really know what my inspiration was for this. I think I saw just like a black shirt. Might have been a bodysuit on one of the sites I used to shop on. Um, and I was like, well, that's like, I'm not gonna buy that cause it's too expensive. But then I was like, oh, I'll make it myself. But one thing that I wanted this bodysuit to have, the main draw was the neckline. Um, I wanted it actually to be very similar to what I'm wearing now, but a little less shouldery. Um, I just think the neckline is very pretty and flattering, especially when you have small chesticles like myself. I will never wear a bra. Anywho, I'm not gonna ramble on too much because I don't really have much to say. I wanted to make a black bodysuit with a neckline like this. That's about it. You're great, watch my video. You can make it or you can just enjoy the process. You look fabulous today. My mom thinks I'm cool. I'm rambling. I feel like in my first video, um, I was much more timid about being a weirdo. Like, don't get me wrong, I was, a, I was a bit of a weirdo. But I've decided I have to stay true to myself. Things are, things are progressively gonna get weird from now on. All right, you sweet bastards, let's get to it. Oh, hello. So first things first, what you wanna do is find a shirt or bodysuit. Bodysuit might make it easier since that's what we're making. But find something that you like the fit of that you want to use for a template. I chose this white shirt because I like the way the neck is and it has sleeves, which I also want. Start by folding it in half. I always pin my shirts in half so that they don't move around as much when I'm outlining them. You want to place the fold of your shirt on the edge of your piece of paper and then trace it. My pen was super cute and decided to die. Fun, 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 fun. For the armhole, move the sleeve back and forth, going carefully to make sure your line doesn't stray. As you can see, I already messed up. There's dashes there where I noticed midway through it wasn't lining up properly with the top, so I restarted it. For the bottom portion, I used an actual bodysuit and matched up the top of the garment with what I had on the page. I'm doing the same thing as before. I have the edge of the garment on the piece of paper and I'm tracing along. I definitely give less of a crap butt, as you can see. I'm no longer doing little dashes, just going balls deep and doing a full line. Full line! Great job, everybody. Yes, that is Vaseline all over my nose. I'm constantly sick, and my nose was getting a little uh, rough. On the neck of the bodysuit, I want it to be lower than the white shirt that I use, so I'm making it an inch lower and gradually raising it up to be in line with the existing pattern because I don't want my shoulder seam to be too thin. And then I'm adding a half inch seam allowance. For some reason, I added an inch seam allowance at the crotch of the bodysuit. I don't quite remember why. It probably had something to do with the hem and the velcro I'm going to add in there. That, uh, that could be it. 
I have a habit of not leaving myself enough room on the piece of paper before I start tracing the garment. Basically, I never take into account seam allowances and uh, all that jazz. So what I do is tape a little piece of paper on the part that I didn't leave enough space for and draw what I need before cutting it out. It might look stupid, but it works. Once I had my front and back piece, I wanted to make sure that it would line up properly. The width isn't as important as the length of your seams because the width has to do with you fitting into it and not with the seams properly matching up. So according to my hands, that part is good. That part is okay. I mean, I'm not too worried about it. And the top part I wanna fix because the back piece looks a little too thick. So I'm making it a little bit thinner as y'all can see. Did you guys want to listen to my monotone voice this entire time? No? Maybe? Well, that's what you're getting. <laughs> Next, you want to outline the sleeve. If you look at the bottom there, I started a line but realized that the shape of the paper wouldn't fit the end product, so I readjusted and started again. I always make a little mark there so that when I flip the sleeve over, I know that that is where it has to be realigned. I'm really not explaining this well, but you will see what I mean in a second. If you'll pay close attention, you'll see that this piece of paper is in fact Frankenstein together with many smaller pieces of paper and much tape. Trace the top of the sleeve the same way you did the armhole, place your fingers on the seam and move it back and forth making little marks along the way. I'm not really the best at this, but don't stress, work slowly and fix anything that looks wonky. And boom! That's where you see that mark come into play. If you look at my great label, you'll see that I started with the back and now I am doing the front of the sleeve. Really interesting stuff. The white shirt didn't have the length of sleeve I wanted. It was only a three quarter length, so I'm using this blue shirt to get the added length that I want. I lined up the teal shirt armpit with where the armpit was on the other shirt and then T-raced it. Just a whole lot of tracing. Don't forget to add your half inch seam allowance. You can do the seam allowance as you trace it, but I am not that talented. <laughs> All right, kids, it's cutting time. Place your pattern on a fold and correctly with the stretch of the fabric. Remember, you want your stretch to go widthwise so that you can fit into this beast and then cut it out. Man, that's cool. Just like me, because I spend a lot of time alone in my room. My fingies are green here because it was around St. Patty's Day. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> I got this piece of fabric a while ago for a different project from the bargain bin at Fabricland. I believe it was the end of a roll, so it was already slightly misshapen. I also had already cut out a bit, which made it awkward for placing the sleeve. It's not a perfect fit, but it will work. It'll just be slightly shorter than I originally intended. Then cut her out. Next, you wanna pin the right sides of your fabric together along your shoulder seam and sew it up. Also, suck it. Once that's sewn, take your sleeve and match the front and back of it with the front and back of your garment and place the peak of the sleeve cut out in line with the seam of your shoulder. Then sew around the armhole, but don't sew the bottom of the sleeve quite yet. This fabric is a spandex cotton blend. Sewing it isn't the worst. It's a little obnoxious though. It likes to slip and roll around, so I had to keep making sure it was laying flat underneath and that nothing was rolling around, mucking up my stitch. As you sew, you wanna make sure that you're not pulling on the back because you don't want your seam to end up looking bumpy and wavy. I'm also using a zigzag stitch because the fabric is stretchy and the zigzag will help it to lie flat. Creep, creep, creep. And now's the time to sew the sleeve together. Pin where you see me pointing and sew it together. And this is what it looks like on. It's poofing out the sides a little. When I traced the pattern, I thought the sides looked a little too wide, but the original bodysuit fits well, so I thought it would be fine, but no big deal. I'm gonna take it in a little bit. I'm pinning it while it's on me so that I know how much I wanna take in. Other than that, I wanna cut some fabric away from the crotch because it's a little too thick. The top and the back look good to me though. I like how low it goes and I like the curve of it. I'm bored, 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 popping everywhere. I double checked the amount I wanted to take in from both sides and made sure it was even. When I sew the sides, I want to make sure that the stitch blends with the existing line so that I don't get a weird pucker. 
And like a maroon, I sewed the crotch together when in reality I'm going to add velcro for quick and easy peeing capabilities. My shoulder seam isn't perfect, it has some little ripples in it, but I'm, uh, I'm too lazy to be worried about it. I cut the wrist of the sleeve because it was pretty uneven and it'll be easier to hem with a cleaner line. I measured a one inch hem around the wrist and then pinned it in place. It's always good to be technical with hemming, however I'm not a Nazi about it because I will easily drive myself crazy trying to make it perfect. If it lies flat and looks nice, I don't really care if it's one inch exactly the entire way around. Just do your best, you tasty nuggets. I'm also going to hem the neckline. That big ol' neck hole. When you hem and there's an existing seam, make sure the seam is open before you fold the hem over so that it lies flat when you sew it together. Pin around the neck hole using as many pins as your heart desires. You can iron it so that it doesn't roll as much when you sew it, but I felt like risking it for the biscuit. I also only did a half inch hem for the neckline. I'm only folding my hem over once because I don't believe this kind of fabric will fray. I, uh, I could be wrong though. <laughs> So this little bitch was difficult to sew. What I did was sew a little bit, then twist it around so it would lie flat, and then sew a little bit again and repeat. It's awkward, but uh, I believe in you. The neckline hem really wanted to roll and pull on me. A longer hem would probably help, and there are techniques of using paper to give it a stiffer edge, but I'm a rebel. By rebel, I mean comfortable with my clothing having mistakes all over it. As I was sewing, I overcompensated. At the side, you can see me pulling it so that when it did pull, it would end up being aligned correctly, if that makes sense. Going over the seam was a little awkward. What I did was sew a little bit and then raise my foot so that the bump is not getting caught on the front of my foot. Make sure your needle is in your fabric before you raise your foot. Otherwise, it'll move and your stitch will get all mucked up. Before hemming around the leg holes, I removed some of that excess fabric so that I wouldn't have a bulky crotch. Next, hem the leg holes and then the crotch. Do the sides first. The crotch hem I'm going to do while I attach the velcro. I'm also doing a half inch hem around the leg holes as well. I used a smaller stitch for the leg hole hem and found that I liked it better than the larger one I had used. I had my settings mid-range at first with a width and length around 3 but the leg holes, I changed it to around 1.52. I wish I had done the smaller stitch from the beginning, but it's not worth stitch ripping the previous hems and doing it all over again. And here I am sewing the Velcro and hem at the same time. Stitch wise, it looks cleaner because so many people stare at my crotch all day. So, you know, I wanted a clean line. <laughs> For the velcro, I sewed around the rectangle and then did an X in the middle to add a little reinforcement. And I couldn't finish this jerk without having at least one more mistake. I sewed the velcro on incorrectly. That one is fine, it is on the wrong side of the fabric, but that one should be on the right side of the fabric so that when I go to put it together, they will actually touch and adhere together. My stitch ripper deserves a medal for always going above and beyond the call of duty. Bye. When I put it on again, I saw that it was still flaring out a small amount, which I don't like. It's kind of stupid. I mean, nobody is going to even see that part, but uh, I'll know. I took it in again a very small amount. On my neckline, there was a bit of a bump there. I think you actually saw me sewing that part. It's because the seam is a little too bulky. I stitch ripped the hem and then laid it flatter. I'm not a creep. All right, and let's cue the shamelessly self-absorbed montage. Good. <laughs> Did you enjoy yourself? You know, I, I hope you did. I enjoyed making it. Here's a little history about the word enjoy. My brother and I think it's funny to say enjoy instead of enjoy. That's the history. Um, I hope you like the end result. I actually really, really like the end result. Other than a few little, like, mm, a few little weird shoulder things 
I think it turned out great. But guys, I know there's huge glare on my glasses. I got these glasses really cheap because I thought I'd be getting new ones that were better, but then I just never did because these are good enough. So just get used to that glare. If you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't like it, leave. No one wants you here. I really know how to end these things. I can feel you entering my mind. I, I'm a, such an awkward person. Leave some nice little comments about the things you liked and some constructive comments about the things that you didn't like. If you don't like my personality, I can't change it. This is who I am. Follow me on social media. And by that, I mean Instagram. I'm not getting anything else. You can't make me get Twitter. I won't do it. Also, subscribe because the more you subscribe, the more I can make these horrible, horrible videos. Hello, and this is Julie from the future. Hi, this is future Julie. Quick note, my subscribe button wasn't working last week. Um, I guess it's just sometimes a bug that happens with new channels. So if you did subscribe, if you think you subscribed, you may not have. So just uh, do a little, little check, little check scene. Just that button's there, hit it again. Um, if you do, thank you. All right, back to past Julie. Really. All right, I'm sure this is way too long already, so I hope you guys had a great time and I'll see y'all next week. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Uh,